every researcher is asking the same question right now. Can ChatGPT actually give me real references and references that I can trust? Or is it just making it up? So my team has stress tested the latest models and what I found shocked me. Some models absolutely nail it, while others are absolutely useless for research. So in this video, I'm gonna show you which ones to avoid, which ones give rock solid references, and which ones are less likely to lie about what's inside the paper. So stick around because by the end you'll know exactly what to look for and which model to use for serious academic work. Alright, so I've done a little cheeky presentation for you. This is it. Best chat GPT model for research. So this is what I'm testing. I'm testing first and second order hallucinations. And you're sat there being like, Andy, what on earth does that mean? Well, I'm about to tell you because this is what we've tested. So the first order is, is the reference real? I've done other studies on this channel about that, but there was something that always bothered me, which is sure, surely it's got like good referencing, but this second order stuff here is, is the claim for why it's being referenced in the actual paper or reference. So I'm calling this second order hallucinations, which is the paper's real, but what's in it doesn't represent why it's being referenced, or maybe it's just not in there at all. I was really interested in finding this out. So my team have put together this um, a little experiment and it's pretty shocking to be honest because it's so different depending on the model. So this is the sort of like uh, matrix we use. Does it provide accurate references? So a correct response obviously means the reference exists. Yes, we like that. And then the claim citation match, as in is the claim in the paper that it's been cited for? So down here, we want responses that are supported by the content of the paper, and we don't want responses that don't have what they're being referenced for in the paper, or it just sort of like makes stuff up. And remember, a large language model is like a prediction machine. And it sometimes just makes stuff up to make you happy. So what sort of models was I using? Here are the models I've tested. So ChatGPT5, Auto, Instant Thinking, and Agent. And I also added some sort of like little sprinkles on top. Ooh, a nice little sprinkle to make it more tasty for you. Sometimes we use deep research, then we use web search, because obviously we want to go out to the web and search uh, databases for academic papers. And then also deep research, and then Agent is something that uh, will shock you, so stay around to the end. Um, here is an example prompt. This is the sort of thing I wanted to know from these large language model models. So my research team wanted to know three things, and this is the sort of prompt we were putting into it. So we wanted to understand the behavior between that and that, and I asked the large language model to provide me with three things. The first thing is a summary answer, then provide the exact quotation where you found that information, and also an APA bibliography of the studies you provided. So this is really stress testing all of the latest large language models in ChatGPT to see if they can actually provide real references and are referenced for the appropriate reason. And here are the results. So first of all, first order hallucinations, which is does the paper actually exist? And this is what I found. So ChatGPT auto plus deep research was great. And what you'll see across this is that deep research and deep research does result in better responses. So I really like that. ChatGPT5 Auto selects the best model for you. And I think for some reason it's done a pretty good job here and it provided 100% correct responses. So we took five papers randomly and just see if they existed and they did. Then we took five from uh, chat GPT instant plus web search and you can see they only got two correct responses out of five papers and then we've got web search with chat GPT thinking chat GPT thinking with deep research so we can see that chat GPT 5 thinking if we add deep research it gets better it gets better than just using web research so this tells us that we should be using deep research if we want real references and then chat GPT 5 agent it wasn't very good. It only provided one real reference out of the five that we randomly selected. So ultimately, here we, you can see that you want to allow ChatGPT to sort of choose the best model for you and always include 
deep research, not web search, when you are looking for real references. And that makes sense, right? Because you're going out into the world and you want to do deep research on a particular research field. It's going to try harder to find real results to put into your response. So the large language model that produced the best response, if you are only looking for references, is ChatGPT5 Auto plus deep research. Good. But second order hallucinations is really what I'm interested in. The reference exists. Does it cite it for the right reasons? So I've never seen a study like this on YouTube and second order hallucinations really does show us where some things go wrong and some things do all right. So this is what I've got here. Look, a nice little slide. Does the reference contain the correct content of why it's being referenced? And here are the results. We've got the same uh, models down here. And you can see that ChatGPT5 Auto Plus Deep Research did the best again. So you can see that ChatGPT5 Auto with Deep Research does the best job here, but it's still not perfect. It's still got a few bits wrong about a citation. So you can see that Adding deep research, deep research always makes it better. So use deep research when you can. Web search was less and then all of this stuff, ChatGPT5 thinking, um, you know, it did all right, but not as good as auto or thinking with deep research turned on. And also stay away, I think, from ChatGPT5 instant um, because even with deep research and stuff, it really just didn't do very well. So turn on deep research. ChatGPT5 Auto, and the biggest surprise here, the biggest surprise of it all, was that ChatGPT5's agent did not produce a correct result at all. So we looked at the five randomly selected things it provided, and it was wrong. It was not providing the right references because they didn't contain the thing it was being referenced for which is amazing to me because this is touted as like one of the best things, allow these agents to go out into the world and do stuff for you, but it does not stand up to testing and scrutiny when you scratch below the surface. Sure, some of the references actually exist, but they're all being made up for why they're being referenced. Ah, oh, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? So, ChatGPT5 Auto with deep research, yes. Next thing putting them together, first and second order hallucinations. These are the take home messages for you. Turn on deep research, use ChatGPT5 Auto, stay away from ChatGPT5 Agent. A lot of these general use case agents don't do very well. I'll be testing AI agents for like SciSpace and other tools soon, so subscribe. Oh, I don't say that very much, do I? Subscribe to this channel and you'll get that information. And I'm also rolling out this study to other large language models so you can know which one actually performs best for academia and research. But here you can see ChatGPT5 Auto Deep Research and Deep Research with Thinking. That's what you should be using. And I'd be sticking with this right here. Always turn on deep research. And then here's a little chart. It's not a bubble chart. Andy, come on, get this right. It's just a scare graph. But this is what we want, real references and correct claim citation match. So this is what it looks like down here. Stay away from agent. If you have to and you want to, you can use thinking, but apparently turning on auto works even better. So we've got chat GPT5 thinking plus deep research and then auto plus deep research and love it, love it, love it. So the take home messages is auto and deep research. Use that. Love it, but here's the thing, there are loads of specific AI tools that are even better for academia and research, so stay tuned to this channel because I'll be stress testing a lot of these different tools soon so you know which one is worth your money and time and uh, isn't just gonna lie to you. That's nice, isn't it? All right then, see you next time. Oh, by the way, this is my like thank you clap slide. When you do a presentation, always have a clap slide, so, Clap now, please, wherever you're watching this. Just a little golf clap would be fine if you can't make much noise. But give me a raucous one if you're in your like, office. Why not? Eh? I think I've earned it. If you like this video, go check out this one where I test ChatGPT, Claude Perplexity, and Gemini for academia and research and actually show you the evidence for which one is best. Go check it out.